welcome to Oceanside's first ever Dia de los Muertos. It's a time for remembering loved ones and also a celebration of the continuation of life. But the festival actually began several days ago. Happy Muerte! <laughs> a full moon set a dramatic note for Friday night's candlelit procession in downtown Oceanside. After a traditional mass at St. Mary's Star of the Sea, people gathered to light their candles and to hear the first blessing of the eight altars built by local Oaxacan families in the windows of Main Street area businesses. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Buenas noches a todos. Welcome to downtown Oceanside. As we gather this day, we ask God to bless us and watch us, watch over us as we journey from altar to altar as we celebrate the of those muertos. There are eight altars. This is the first altar. We're going to walk down the sidewalk here and go to Main Street Oceanside. What you need to know is, that's all you need to remember is, follow the music. <laughs> Traditionally, altars are set up in the family home or long ago in the village cemetery. Local Oaxacan families spent long hours setting up the Oceanside altars, like this one in Mary's restaurant, to share their tradition with us. Framed by a bountiful display of golden orange marigolds, plentiful at this time of year, the altar often has family photos, along with a sweet bread baked especially for this purpose. A favorite meals like chicken mole, always the sugar skulls decorated by the children in the family, and additional objects that have a particular meaning to that family and to their loved ones who have passed on. Dia de los Muertos is, uh, we are now for, I don't know, a decade, we celebrate them from Mexico. Uh, I, was, I came here when I was 12 years, but even then I already know about Dia de los Muertos. And I remember my, my mom and my grandfather, they always celebrate this in November. And the altar uh, signifies that, you know, uh, they do this because th that day, like my dad was telling me, like, because I was asking them why we do this. And they said, well, they said, all you, uh, you grand, your grandfather, my dad was, what is that? On, on November 1st was Dia de los Muertos, they coming home. And when they coming home, you know, they, they, I think they remember what they like, they used to like to eat, and they used to like eat the bread and mole, one of them, I mean, uh, traditional in, in, in Oaxaca. What they not another do something that you're not any, you not celebrate the two guys, three years, come back, men are good. Just kiss it. Gracias. And that means? That means I said I want to say hi to all my fellow Oaxacan and as they know we are celebrating Dia de los Muertos and for the old loved one had passed away and hopefully they're coming back and see us and, and make, you know, uh, wish good wishes to everybody and thank you very much. This is not a celebration, this is a remember of those we don't have, you know. Uh, Dia de los Muertos and the, on, the, on November 2nd we we call it uh, Todos Santos, those who pass away or who uh, die on uh, natural uh, death and uh, tragedy like uh, September 11. Uh, when, when a person dies, they turn to a saint, a Santos. That's what we call it, Santos. We're celebrating uh, the saints of uh, each people or each person who pass away. On Saturday, the day's events turned to education. As you notice in your program that uh, Mr. Martinez is going to give a, a Oaxacan presentation. 
he's uh, made some comments on what uh, Dia de los Muertos means to him, and he's also has written a poem. And uh, he'll be saying it in Oaxacan, in Spanish, and then uh, the doctor will be translated for us. Can I say it? Because I'm me. Can I say what you have to make it true? It's what you take. Take what you can. It's okay. That's what I'm asking you. Yo me estaba al pollo aquí, lo pregunto. ¿Acaso de veras se vive con raíz en la tierra? Have you had strong roots here on earth? Not for always, not forever here on earth. We are only here, here for a long, uh, for a short time. Even if you're made of jade, you're going to break down. The love and the passion from the land where they came from, and then suddenly they need to move to another place because, you know, we need to survive, and they can't come here to the United States, and they're confronted with many situations. It's very important for us to try to understand that the cosmovision that the uh, pre-Columbian uh, Indians had is very, very different to the understanding and the worldview that we have today. Their view, they had 13 heavens. We're here on earth and they had 13 heavens above us. And then underneath they had nine stages of the underworld. And one of the most beautiful, I think one of the most profound ideas and concepts that they have is that one god, for example, let's say I'm Quetzalcoatl, and you know, excuse me, Quetzalcoatl for assuming you're wrong, but let's say that I'm Quetzalcoatl, and I need to do some work as a god, but then I don't have the power of the rain, and let's say Armando is the Tlaloc, the god of rain. So I'm gonna go to Armando, and as Quetzalcoatl, and say, Armando, I need to take this attribute from you. So I'm gonna take that from you, and I'll give it back, and you can have one attribute for me. So I'm not just encased in one type of actions. I can go to all the other gods, and take some of those attributes and perform some of the tasks that the other gods do. And then you have a pantheon that all of them can perform different parts of the universe and then you have a very harmonious universe where not only one god had one function but all of them can take attributes from the other one. And you would see first the god of creation, el dios de la creación, which is Tlaloc because he's the, the uh, god of the rain. And you see this god that has a tree in front of him. Entonces tienen al dios Tlaloc enfrente y dios Tlaloc está sembrando un árbol. Exactamente atrás de él, right behind him, you see Mitlantecutli, which is the god of death, es el dios de la muerte. And right after he planted the tree, Mitlantecutli goes right behind him and destroys the tree. And it doesn't end there, because then Tlaloc comes back and plants another tree. And then Mitlantecutli comes back and destroys the tree. And they have to be seen not as separate entities. It has to be seen as one. And that one is what creates life. And that's what allows us to be here. The idea of the Day of the Dead here in the United States is becoming very multicultural. It's becoming very community oriented. And for me, it's one of the most beautiful things because everything that I talk about from the Aztecs and this dynamic of cultures, instead of being exclusive, it's inclusive and it's this dynamic force that creates new culture as well as it creates new life. And I'm very proud to be part of that and be proud of to be here today talking about this because we as migrants, we as Americans, we as any other culture that is participating in these celebrations, we are creating a new culture. And I think that we should celebrate that and celebrate the Day of the Dead and celebrate that we're able to be here the way I see it, um, Dia de los Muertos is that. It's a celebration of the passing. It's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of uh, what we have, where we might go in the, in the next passing. It's, it's an uh, interesting fusion of cultures. Cultural fusion seems to be one of the key phrases this weekend. And this altar is actually a really good example of that fusion. This is the day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. Downtown Oceanside comes alive on Sunday, the last day, the celebration of life. All kinds of music, all kinds of dancing, and plenty for everyone to enjoy. Well, 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 you've been stepping out 
The children's area was an idea that Carmen Amigan and my daughter Regina had put together. They wanted to have a place where children could just interact, build something. And uh, so we got together, and they, as you can see, they have all these activity tables. I think it's neat they put it in a circle because the kids kind of moved area to area, and they could just do what they want to do. We wanted to make it educational, and so we created with a, a local artist, um, Sylvia Garcia, a a booklet um, with some uh, educational components to the Dia de los Muertos, both um, in Spanish and in English. And we also and we also have um, different activities. We have some of the sugar skulls um, in the tables where the children will be able to decorate them. We also brought some pins that the kids are also decorating. And we have some skeletons, as you can see over here, and some uh, masks. We have some pumpkins over here. We had the cloths donated, and you can see there's a volunteer over there. And what they're going to do is they're going to fill the pumpkins with uh, cotton and then they'll string it through and it, it forms a pumpkin. Right now we're doing various activities that are, are reflective of the culture of the Day of the Dead. The program that I'm with is called Pick Art. It's, uh, it's an art program at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Carlsbad and San Diego and at Casa de Amparo and we have professional artists that come and teach the kids and work in 10-week terms. So this is um, some of the things that we've done in the past as well. Well, it's very interesting as I was preparing for this festival, um, I knew a little bit about the Day of the Dead from the past, so I, it wasn't entirely new to me, but one of the things I kept seeing as I was putting together some of the materials for today is that it's about death and celebrating those that have deceased, but it's also a very joyful event so that you'll see the skulls and the skeletons, but they're so colorful and so lively that it, um, it, it's more of a celebration and a remembrance than something to be scared of, which is what you normally think of when you see a skeleton. We had so many people down here in our first time out, hundreds of people of uh, just, you know, just reflecting the diversity of town and celebrating each other and just really pleased to be here. Uh, we had music, we've still got more ballet folklorico dance, and it's kind of like a homegrown affair. We have, uh, behind me, we have an Oceanside artist. Mi nombre es Víctor Hugo Morales Torres. Soy originario de la ciudad de Oaxaca, residente de Ocean Side. My name is Victor Hugo, Hugo Morales, and I'm from the city of Ocean Side, and I am uh, originally from the city of Oaxaca, Mexico. Primeramente, estamos celebrando el Día de los Muertos. First of all, we are celebrating the Day of the Dead. Y por medio de la ciudad de Ocean Side, the mainstream, de la librería de Ocean Side, y el grupo Nick Java Mecha. Estamos participando con una colección de máscaras prehispánicas celebrando el Día de los Muertos. Uh, with the support of the different organizations that have allowed us to be here, we are exhibiting the different types of masks uh, that are pre-Hispanic. La intención nuestra es que las raíces culturales prehispánicas de México se sigan a través del tiempo y del espacio, se siga promoviendo la cultura por medio de estos eventos culturales que están organizando. Our purpose is to continue to expand and to inform and educate the public about our customs and about our traditions. They're based on different types of animals, such as like the vampire in that one. Los jaguares. The jaguars. Los toros, los bulls. The bulls. Los vampires. Los vampiros. The vampires. Pero todo era en relación con la naturaleza, la luna, el sol. Everything was related to the natural things such as the, the moon and the sun. A variety of merchandise was on sale. And some of Oceanside's favorite restaurants also had a lot of yummy food to offer. Where, where did you guys just open up? 274A South Harbor Drive. Oh! How's the uh, first Dia de los Muertos been for you today? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, we've had a real good time and a great turnout. Oh, we'll be here next year, yeah. Be bigger and better.
It's very good. Very good. Not only just for fun, but a good opportunity to hand out important and educational materials. There is a program that has been uh, created recently in collaboration with um, Community Housing of North County, the Small Business Development um, Center in the City of Oceanside, uh, Parks and Rec, and also um, CDBG funding. And the program has been created um, to be able to offer both classes in either English or in Spanish, excuse me, uh, for individuals who have had limited access to maybe the college courses or university level and the component ha uh, it has three different components it's the first component is preparation you know making sure that their uh, credit is 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 ready and um, budgets that type of, of thing and then the second part of it is the, the educational component which is an eight-week um, uh, classes they meet once a week for three hours and that's the learning phase and then we have the implementation phase which is um, pretty much putting their business plan together and um, starting their businesses. Well, again, Rocky is on our staff of Oceanside Unified School District. We've got all the kids here. We've got different community uh, organizations. So it's just so integrated, it's hard to pick it apart because this is a real community effort, and along with the community is our schools. And that's the way it should be, and that's the way it has been. So I'm really appreciative of Rocky bringing in the school district and, again, our city people and just working together. So it's been fantastic. The Oaxacan families that built the altars received an official thank you. I think that the, the spirit that's here, that the thing that transcends all cultures is the, the humanness that we share in the cycle of life. And I think that part of this ceremony really reverberates and makes us think about the man-to-man, person-to-person that really makes community and unites people. And that certainly is the spirit here today. And what about next year? It's going to be huge, and we already have people c coming in that want to get involved. Uh, in particular, at Cal State San Marcos is going to bring their art exhibits down here. We've been talking to Skip Paul about it. We have other businesses that already want to build altars. Uh, we're going to start in July, actually plant the seeds. So we'll have the marigolds. We're going to actually pick them and bring them into the event. It helps the kids to feel a part of this community. Uh, we, we may see, yes, you're the part of us, but it's the kids and the parents that so many times, especially in schools, don't participate like they would want to because they don't feel comfortable. Now more and more they can feel comfortable and they will come out and when they're more than welcome, we want them to be part of us. And this is part of, part of us telling them, yes, welcome, you come back. I've already heard that there are more individuals that want to have more uh, businesses that want to have altars in their locations, so I think there's going to be more opportunities for that. Uh, we already know that next year it's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event, so in some respects the seeds are being planted, and we'll start, uh, we'll start looking at it next week then so that we can grow it, so that we can have it bigger and better. But I think this is going to be a great tradition, uh, and I think this will be a significant uh, tradition for Main Street Oceanside as well. We have Oceanside Ballet Folkloricos and probably our first time ever Battle of the Ballet Folkloricos, which are the folkloric dancers. And the two Oceanside folkloric groups got together and they are still going on right now. Thank you for joining us here at KOCT to celebrate Oceanside's first ever Dia de los Muertos. Festivities are already being planned for next year, so be sure to mark it in your calendar, November 1st through November 4th, 2002, to celebrate Oceanside's newest tradition. Uh, it was thank you very much to let us participate and to let people uh, know this is our tradition. This is our tradition. Please tell her thank you for sharing your traditions with us. Muchas gracias.